say these mysterious things and people go, oh boy, that's profound. But they didn't really know what the sages were talking about. To know, you have to approach them and basically do service, give them something or do some other kind of service and then they would reveal the actual meaning. Huh? And this is called Upa Anishad. Upa means come close. Anishad means sit down. <laughs> so come close to the spiritual master and sit down and inquire into the actual meaning of these uh, strange sayings in the Vedas. Uh, then, because the spiritual master has been initiated into the esoteric teaching, he can give the meaning. He can explain the secrets of the scriptures. Nobody else can actually explain it. So, in the days when the Vedic culture was uh, still going, you know, was, was still uh, prevalent all around the world, then someone could easily find a spiritual master and get this knowledge. But now, it's very difficult to find a qualified spiritual master. So, we have to go back to the original Vedanta and clear up all of these mysterious sayings. Huh? For example, um, the first saying is, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Huh? Atato means now, at the present time. Brahma means the Supreme Absolute Truth. And Jignasa means to develop a desire for inquiring into it. So you see the mood. One should develop a desire for inquiry into the Absolute Truth. When? Now. Therefore. Ataha means therefore. Uh, so ata, ataha, ato. Therefore, now, Brahma Jignasa. One should develop the desire for inquiry into the Absolute Truth. Therefore is a statement or a word that indicates the conclusion of something. That means something has gone before. There's been some arguments, there's been some discussions, there's been some information huh, or conversations before this. And now, therefore, is the conclusion, one should inquire into the absolute truth. So what is the previous uh, conversation or what is the previous material or the context of this mysterious say? It is the Upanishads. The Upanishads, there's 108 principal Upanishads and thousands of minor Upanishads. And these Upanishads, they all discuss, each one discusses a particular set of questions, of inquiries. And although the answers are also given, the answers are given in a very mysterious way. Uh, so that if you read the Upanishad, at the end of the Upanishad, you'll be scratching your head going, what did he say exactly? What does that mean? In other words, you have to approach a guru to get the meaning. So the commentaries on Vedanta Sutra are, first of all, the Srimad Bhagavatam itself. All of the questions that are raised in the Upanishads, all of the questions discussed in Vedanta Sutra are answered in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. But maybe even after reading Srimad Bhagavatam, someone still doesn't understand. So all the Vaishnava Acharyas have written commentaries on Vedanta Sutra. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, uh, Srinivas Acharya, um, uh, Madhva Acharya, uh, all the great Vaishnava Acharyas of all four lineages have written commentaries on Vedanta. Therefore, if we really want to understand Vedanta Sutra, we have to go through these commentaries and understand the meaning. And then all the secrets of the Upanishads are unlocked. They become obvious. There's no need for speculation, no need for guesswork, no need to get all, you know, mysterious and obscure and uh, try to, you know, understand things in a, in a mystical way. No, 
it's very clear very very simple and clear but we have to get these answers from the right source not everybody can give them only someone who is a disciple in one of the four bona fide lineages the Vedas so we are in the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya Madhva Gaudiya lineage we're an initiate and our spiritual master wanted to make sure all his disciples understood this knowledge, this Vedanta. Unfortunately, because of the political situation in ISKCON, he was not able to finish his translation and commentary on Vedanta. That means some of his disciples have to do it. Why is this so important? Because Srila Prabhupada made this knowledge specifically a condition for becoming an initiating guru in the lineage of Lord Chaitanya. He wrote a letter to Kirtanananda back in 1969 where he said, you will hold three examinations. The first one is on Sri Ishapanishad and Bhagavad Gita, and that's called Bhakti Shastri. If someone passes that examination, they get the Bhakti Shastri degree. And the next examination is on teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and some other small books, uh, Nectar of Devotion. Well, that's not a small book. <laughs> nectar of Devotion, Nectar of Instruction, like that. If someone passes that examination, then he's called Bhakti Vaibhava. Bhakti Vaibhava. And finally, if someone passes the third examination, the third examination will be on Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta Sutra, Srimad Bhagavatam. If someone can pass all this, then they get Bhakti Vedanta title and they can initiate disciples. This is the only letter, the only instruction historically ever given by Srila Prabhupada where he discusses exactly how you become an initiating guru in our lineage. And he says, basically, you have to know Sri Ishopanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion, and Vedanta Sutra. Huh? And now that I'm actually studying the Vedanta Sutra, and I'm getting into all the details of it, I can see why. Because the Vedanta Sutra ties together all the different parts of the Vedas and puts them into perspective and into relationship with one another. So if you study Vedanta Sutra and you understand how all this fits together, you get like the complete Vedic knowledge. You get the, the viewpoint that gives you the complete realization. Huh? Because there are three phases of realization in the Vedic path. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan iti shabdhyate. Huh? There are three levels or three kinds of realization. Brahman realization or the, the uh, impersonal absolute truth. Paramatma realization or the localized expansion of the Lord within the heart. And Bhagavan or the supreme personality of Godhead. So for a person to be a bona fide guru, he must have all three kinds of realization. He, ha he has to be in complete knowledge of God. Otherwise, how can he teach disciples who are at different levels? How can he give the knowledge in the, just the right way uh, to the people who are uh, realizing God in all these different flavors or different aspects? It's, it's not a textbook procedure. Everyone's approach is individual. It's different. And you have to get to know the individual, have to understand their consciousness and their different issues, their personality, their mind, and so on. The art of spiritual instruction is very deep. It's at least as deep as the art of sadhana and becoming realized yourself. Huh? I was really amazed. I thought, oh, when I attain self-realization, then I'll magically be able to teach <laughs> very nicely. <laughs> but no, no. 
even after attaining realization, it's another huge endeavor to learn how to present it. Because you're literally in a different state of consciousness. Uh, it's like talking to people in a different language uh, or something like that. You, you have to learn how to express yourself in a completely new way for it to be effective. By effective, I mean that you can actually transfer your realization or inspire another person to attain that same realization. Uh, it's not like uh, anything that I can do will automatically give you the realization. But if I can inspire you to inquire in the right way, then you can get that realization for yourself. And that's what we're trying to do. So the art of sharing the realization depends on having 